We are now greatly honoured to welcome the Home Secretary, the Right Honourable Theresa May, who will address the congregation. Your Excellency, Chief Rabbi, Rabbi Lawrence, Rabban, Rabbanin. I hope it gets better. Just wait and see. Mr. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen, Havarim of Benai Akiva. It is an honour to be with you this evening to celebrate Yom Ha'etz Ha'atzma'ut. Israel's Independence Day, which of course is preceded by Yom Hazekaron, when we remember the sacrifice of those who fought to achieve and protect that independence. Israel is at once an ancient and a young nation. The modern state of Israel is the fulfilment of many generations of struggle. But as I'm sure some of the older members of the congregation tonight will agree, 67 is still a very youthful age. <laughs> I had the pleasure of visiting Israel for the first time last summer. The purpose of my trip was to meet experts in cyber security and to see for myself the progress Israel has made in combating modern slavery, two challenges which both Israel and the UK are confronting with great determination. One of the last acts to receive royal assent before Parliament was dissolved a few weeks ago was the Modern Slavery Act. It is the first law of its kind in Europe and one of which I am particularly proud as Home Secretary. And I am pleased to say that it learnt a great deal from the experiences of Israel the first country in the world to pass anti-trafficking legislation. During my visit, I had a series of very productive discussions about modern slavery and the protection of children on the internet. I met victims of human trafficking and experts in cyber security and saw the work of some cutting edge Israeli cyber startups. In those respects, my visit was really very useful, but it was also overshadowed by the terrible news which emerged during my stay about the murder of three Israeli teenagers near Halol. The murder of those boys and the loss of life among Israelis and Palestinians in the subsequent military operations in Gaza was a sad reminder that the Arab-Israeli conflict is not just an abstract debate argued over the page of Western newspapers and television screens. It is a real conflict with innocent victims on both sides, and, as we remember this evening, with brave soldiers who pay the ultimate price to defend their fellow citizens from indiscriminate terrorist attacks and existential threats. It is a tragic fact of history that the Jewish people have had to protect themselves against repeated attempts to obliterate them, and that the safety of the Jewish people can never be taken for granted. As Home Secretary, I've also seen that sadly, that safety cannot be taken for granted here in Europe either. I've been appalled by recent reports from the Community Security Trust and others, indicating a rise in anti-Semitic attacks in the UK. That's why I've worked closely with my colleagues, Theresa Villiers, Mike Freer, Matthew Offord, David Burrows, Lee Scott, and MPs from all parties to make sure the Home Office is taking all the action necessary to combat anti-Semitic hate crime. I'm clear that everyone in this country should be able to live their lives free from racial and religious hatred and harassment. No one should live in fear because of their beliefs or who they are. That's why we've provided over £2.3 million of funding to organisations and schools to help prevent hate crime, increase reporting and improve the operational response. As the Prime Minister said recently, if the Jewish community does not feel secure, then our whole national fabric is diminished. That's why in this year's budget, we committed more than £7 million to fund guards for all Jewish private schools and colleges. 
It's why we've given a further £3 million to protect synagogues and other Jewish community buildings, and £1.5 million to help the Community Security Trust build a state-of-the-art mission control centre to respond rapidly to those who need their help. The CST does a first-class job in providing security for events and institutions that may face the threat of violent disruption. And I know that everyone here is full of gratitude for those volunteers who are outside tonight helping to keep us safe. Yeah. On behalf of us all, thank you. As I saw for myself when I visited them, the CST also patiently collect, collate and disseminate information on bigotry and prejudice. In the past, it was too easy for extremists who wanted to do nothing more than stir up hatred to gain entry to Britain. At the same time, we had the absurd situation where Israeli government ministers were reluctant to visit this country because they feared a citizen's arrest and prosecution under the so-called principle of universal jurisdiction. I'm proud to say that we have fixed that particular problem with our Police Reform Act. There is an influential strain of opinion in this country that says words are not deeds. That merely saying offensive things should not lead to prosecution or any form of state action. That free speech is an essential value of a free society and the state should never interfere with it. Now there is something to that argument. Free speech is an essential British value and one of the things that makes this country great. But it is precisely because it is so valuable that free speech needs to be protected and not abused. In speech, as in other areas, freedom is the liberty of self-control. We need to be wary of the argument that words do not lead to deeds, because they can and they do. The dreadful events in Paris and Copenhagen at the beginning of this year were reminders of the serious terrorist threat that we face. One of the victims in Denmark was a volunteer on security duty at a bat mitzvah outside a synagogue just like the one we're in tonight. And the attack on a Jewish supermarket in Paris where four people were killed was a chilling reminder of the anti-Semitism that we have seen not just in France but in this country too. I know that many Jewish people in this country are feeling vulnerable and fearful that you are anxious for your families, your children, and yourselves. And I never thought I would see the day when members of the Jewish community in the United Kingdom would say that they were fearful of remaining here in our country. And that means that we must all redouble our efforts to wipe out anti-Semitism here in Britain. As I was proud to say to the Board of Deputies in the wake of that horrific attack in Paris, Jewish people have long been an important and integral part of this country. We cherish the enormous contribution you make, not just in the past, but today and every day. And as I said that day, echoing those who proudly proclaimed, Je suis Charlie, je suis Ahmed, and je suis Shreef, without its Jews, Britain would not be Britain. Just as without its Muslims, Britain would not be Britain. Without its Sikhs, Hindus, Christians, and people of other faiths and none, Britain would not be Britain. We are a thriving, liberal, modern country, precisely because of this rich coexistence of people of different faiths, backgrounds, and ethnicities. It is what makes this country what it is. We must never take this for granted, and we can never take for granted the British values that underpin our society. Freedom, pluralism and respect for one another. We have to argue for them, fight for them and work for them every single day. And it's groups like Benaya Kiva which play such an important part in that mission. As one of the most prominent Jewish youth movements in the UK, Benaya Kiva gives young Jewish people in Britain a framework to live a religious lifestyle in the modern world and a mission to make an active contribution to our community. You encourage young people to take on leadership roles and positions of responsibility in the community, fighting for the values which unite us 
which make you proud Jews and proud Britons, and which make this country what it is. So today, as we celebrate the independence of the State of Israel and pay our respects to those who have fought so hard for it, I also want to pay tribute to the work you do here in the United Kingdom. To those of you here tonight who give up your time to help run Benaya Kiva, and to all those young people who volunteer in your communities through its great initiatives, thank you for everything that you do. You help to make this country what it is, and we are all grateful for your hard work and devotion. So tonight, as we celebrate the 67th birthday of the State of Israel, I also want to say thank you, and join you in saying, Kadima Benaya Kiva.